President Trump has officially banned critical race theory from the federal government, all as he threatens to defund any and all schools that indoctrinate their students with Marxist propaganda. In this video, we're going to take a look at precisely what critical race theory is, why it's such a pernicious threat to our nation, and how President Trump has indeed declared war on critical race theory, purging it from our nation's government institutions. You are not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone, patriots all across the globe. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you as always. I hope you're having a wonderful start to your week. If this is your first time here and you're looking for some daily encouragement and optimism as well as some analysis to help you make sense of these crazy times and you have found your oasis here on this channel, we post two videos a day analyzing current events and live some super awesome conservative trends so we can all live in the present light of even better things to come. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. It'd be an absolute privilege to have you as a regular part of our channel where each and every day we together celebrate the inevitable collapse of left-wing globalism and the unstoppable rise of a new conservative age. Now, before we dive into things here, let's give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, and that's our good friends over at BioTrust. You know, with our rapid advances in science over the years, there are much more powerful ways and effective ways to boost our immune system than just taking mega doses of vitamin C. In fact, our sponsors over at BioTrust have combined four of the world's best immune-supporting powerhouses, along with that mega dose of vitamin C, into their number one immunity support product, Ageless Body. Simply put, Ageless Body provides you five of the most powerful immune support ingredients available. I take it every day, and I love it. And if you click on that link below, you can now get Ageless Body at their lowest price ever, with 51% off and free U.S. shipping to boot. So do not wait. Click on that link or go to agewithstevechurley.com and give your immune system an awesome boost today. All right, let's dive right in here. President Trump is doing something pretty extraordinary right now. And um, I have to say I've been waiting for something like this for some time. The Trump administration has issued an order that is officially banning what is called critical race theory training in any and all federal agencies. An official memo was released to the public announcing the order, declaring critical race theory, uh, quote, divisive anti-American propaganda. Specifically, Trump is concerned that, quote, employees across the executive branch have been required to attend trainings where they are told that virtually all white people contribute to racism, or where they're required to say that they benefit from racism. Now, according to press reports, in some cases, these trainings have further claimed that there is racism embedded in the belief that America is the land of opportunity, or the belief that the most qualified person should receive a job. And it goes on, quote, these types of trainings not only run counter to the fundamental beliefs for which our nation has stood since its inception, but they also engender division and resentment within the federal workforce. The president has directed me to ensure that federal agencies cease and desist from using taxpayer dollars to fund these divisive, un-American propaganda training sessions. And this is the director of the Office of Management and Budget speaking here in this memo. And the memo concludes by stating that, quote, the divisive, false, and demeaning propaganda of the critical race theory movement is contrary to all we stand for as Americans and should have no place in the federal government, close quote. Amen and amen to that. And just in case you think that President Trump is overreacting, let me read you something from a manual compiled by affirmative action officer, Carolyn Pitts. Now check this out. I'm quoting her here just so you get a real sense of what precisely President Trump is banning from the federal government. Quote, in the United States at present, only whites can be racists since whites dominate and control the institutions that create and enforce American cultural norms and values. Blacks and other third world peoples do not have access to the power to enforce any prejudices they may have, so they cannot, by definition, be racist. And then she goes on to say, all white individuals in our society are racist, even those free from conscious prejudice because they receive benefits distributed by a white racist society through its institutions. Our institution and cultural processes are so arranged as to automatically benefit whites 
just because they are white. Okay, that's what's called critical race theory. And it was brought here to the United States by members of what's called the Frankfurt School in the 1930s and 40s. So these are Marxists, they're cultural Marxists, like uh, Herbert Marcuse, Max Horkheimer, Theodore Adorno. These are all these radical professors who come to the United States from Europe during the rise of Hitler in World War II. And they start teaching students a Marxist conception of life in the guise of what we now know as critical theory. Okay, The guiding principle of critical theory, and this is absolutely key, the guiding principle was to produce an account of society that assumed that assumed that society was made up of intentional power discrepancies that deliberately oppress and discriminate against people. Again, this is the assumption. Society is made up of power relationships where some people get to impose their view of the world on others and they always defend the status quo to protect their arbitrary power advantages over others. So what critical theory seeks to do is to supposedly unmask, reveal this arbitrary domination found, power domination found in Western society uh, so that Western society is assumed by definition as, as guilty. And then once exposed, then justice is supposed to kick in and provide paths of emancipation for the oppressed. So it's thoroughly Marxist. There's a bourgeois, there's a proletariat, there's exploitation, and there's an ideological means of emancipating and liberating the, uh, the exploited and the oppressed. And as you can see, it gets very, very violent. And Trump is absolutely correct in declaring this ideology a threat to American ideals. In fact, the scholar from the Manhattan Institute, Heather MacDonald, has detailed how it is precisely this pernicious racial logic that comes uh, the, uh, that comes out of our critical uh, race theory that has engendered such hostility toward police officers because they're seen as the defenders and protectors of a racist system. So from this vantage point, what happened to, say, George Floyd or in the case of this latest Kenosha shooting, uh, by definition, are not isolated incidents. They are rather indicators revealing the painful truth about an epidemic of white police on black citizen crime. So I think the pervasiveness of critical race theory and, and critical theory in general is essential to understanding what's really going on here in terms of what we're seeing with this mass societal unrest in our urban centers. But Trump isn't through. He's also now threatening federal funding for schools that use the New York Times own contribution to critical race theory called the 1619 Project. But first, before we get into that, we, of course, are in an election year, and of all of our presidential elections, few were as stunning as the election of Donald Trump just four years ago. But how could so many of our elites, from the mainstream media to political pundits, how could so many have been so wrong in 2016, and how are they still not getting it in 2020? That's precisely what my book, President Trump and Our Post-Secular Future, explores. In it, you'll discover precisely what our political class miss. And they continue to miss that the election of Donald Trump was nothing less than a symbol of the end of secular globalism as our dominant political paradigm. So throughout the book, you're going to discover all the various ways in which President Trump's nationalist populism is redefining politics for the foreseeable future. And to make it even better for a limited time, you can get my book, President Trump and Our Post-Secular Future, absolutely, totally, and completely free as an ebook download by clicking on the link in the pinned comment section below. That's right, absolutely free, my gift to you. But it is a limited time offer, so don't wait. Click on that link in the pinned comment section and get your free copy of my book, President Trump and Our Post-Secular Future, today. All right, so Trump is purging the federal government of critical race theory, and now he's doing the same thing in our public school system. The Trump administration has announced that they're working together with the Department of Education to examine the use of the New York Times Magazine's 1619 project in our nation's schools. Now, Fox News is reporting that the project is based on the premise that American history actually began in 1619, which is uh, cited as the date African slaves first arrived in Virginia. And everything following this, all the historical events studied in American history, should then be studied through this lens. So it's a highly Marxist conception of history, right, of the oppressor and the oppressed. And President Trump made it clear that any school found to be using this curriculum will lose their federal funding. 
Now, Trump's policy echoes the sentiments of the Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton, who back in July introduced a bill that would deny funds to any school using the 1619 Project in its curriculum. By that time, we now know that schools in Chicago and Washington, D.C. had already amended their history curricula to teach this blatantly cultural Marxist revision of American history to their students. So instead, President Trump has been stressing the need for restoring what he calls patriotic education in our nation's schools. Uh, he brought that up in his awesome convention speech, speech a couple weeks back. Uh, as a way of being able to push back on the cultural Marxist lies that are creating this, basically this insurrection throughout our nation. The solution is to teach students the unifying frames of reference of civic nationalism, where we together find our national identity as a single people united by ideals such as faith, family, and freedom, rather than the disunifying values of cultural Marxism, which is on the focus on power discrepancies between races and the ascription of racism and other sins to a single race or gender. Now, polls show that Americans want a patriotic education. They want their children to be taught to take pride in their nation and our contribution to the world. A recent study by Rasmussen Reports found that 57% of those surveyed agreed with the statement, the only path to unity is to rebuild shared national identity focus on common American values and virtues, of which we have plenty. This includes restoring patriotic education in our nation's schools, where they're trying to change everything that we have learned. Nearly 60% of the surveyed public agree with that statement. So Trump is clearly riding a supermajority wave here in pushing patriotic education. But don't tell that to our globalist elites, right? Look at this from Time magazine. Patriotic education, huh, Trump rejects grappling with America's racist past. And check out, check out the opening paragraph. It's literally all you need to read. At a moment when books about America's racist history are selling out, and some in the country, including many in corporate boardrooms, are trying to grapple with the enduring legacy of systemic racism, President Trump and Republicans are laying out a gauzy story of America that requires no reckoning for the country's history of slavery, racial terror, and social, economic, and political injustice. I mean, and this is trying to pass itself off as professional journalism. This blatantly cultural Marxist rhetoric, this disparity rhetoric, right, that was pushed by bona fide Marxists such as Herbert Marcuse back in the 1960s on our college campuses, this blatantly Marxist rhetoric is trying to pass itself off as objective journalism. Just hilarious. Now, of course, of course, no one is arguing that we need to reject grappling with America's racist past. What we reject, and most intentionally so, is grappling with that past through the absurd premises of critical race theory, which the author of this Time Magazine article has clearly inhaled. So this is a bold move by Trump, both to cancel any old, uh, anything uh, critical race theory in classes or in uh, federal government, as well as to stop the Marxist program, the 1619 Project in our schools. Once again, President Trump is showing himself to be faithful to his promise of draining the swamp, most particularly the pernicious swamp of cultural Marxism. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. And you will definitely want to check out my latest video. I just uploaded it on how Black Lives Matter is going utterly hysterical as Antifa radicals set themselves on fire. <laughs> You're not going to want to miss this. Make sure to click on the link and I'll see you over there. God bless.